Thank you, Saskia, very much for this very kind introduction. And I'm very much looking forward to the review, by the way. And um, I would also like to say thank you to everybody for making this event possible, especially Professor Novo, Saskia and Andrea, and everybody else. And now I will just jump into my presentation. Relics of travels and travel writing have always been a source for inspiration and knowledge about close and distant places that were unfamiliar to the audience, especially during times of restricti restricted possibilities to travel oneself, as many of us experienced painfully during the last few years. During the early modern period, travelogues continuously gained popularity. From the 16th to the 19th century, the numbers of printed travelogues grew from several hundreds to many of thousands. Also, travel literature continues to be a popular topic of research. Much remains to be explored about the interconnections of the book market and travelogues. The paper responds to this by analyzing a large corpus of printed German language travelogues in the holdings of the Austrian National Library, encompassing over 3,500 prints. This corpus has been created with the help of machine learning by the team of the project Travelogs Perceptions of the Other 1500 to 1876, the computerized analysis, that has been funded by the Austrian and the German Research Fund, FWF and DFG, and um, which I had the pleasure to be a part of for the last four years, and luckily we got funding for the next three years also. And you can see our homepage on the presentation right now. The present paper seeks an answers to a more specific question. In which way did the book market influence the content of travelogues? I will highlight the importance of place and time of printing regarding the described travel destinations and ultimately how this affected the circulation of knowledge about these regions, and especially the Orient. Within the approx next approximately 20 minutes, I will first describe how the corpus of the present analysis was created, how it is constituted, and how you can access it. Then I will move on to the analysis itself by focusing on the 16th and 17th centuries. I will give an overview on the timeline of travelogues published by Anim, as well as dominant printing places and publishing houses within the corpus. While travelogues became and remained an intensely studied topic in the humanities in recent decades, and researchers keep assembling more and more accounts from the modern period, until now statistical data on the genre as a whole has been lacking. To enable such analysis, the team of the travelogues project first needed to create a corpus. Therefore, we had to determine what exactly constitutes a travelogue. In short, we define the travelogue as a specific type of media that reports on a journey that actually took place. Hence, two elements characterize in each travelogue. The first is content-based, description of travels, and the second, biographical, factuality of travels. Operating with this definition, the project team collected a corpus of German language travelogues in the holdings of the Austrian National Library that were printed between 1500 and 1876. These focal points had one main reason the availability of digital data. Thanks to um, the project Austrian Books Online, short Abo, a private public partnership with Google Books, approximately 600,000 volumes of these historical holdings of the ONB have been digitized and the texts have been extracted with optical character recognition, OCR, software. The digitization process started with those holdings that were printed after the end of the Inkinabel period, 1501, which is why 1500 is a little bit of a trick. Actually, it was 1501. And then it moved um, forward di diachronically. And by the beginning of the project, it had reached the year 1876, which is why we stopped here. And the focus on one language facilitated the comparability of the texts. The project team, however, did not assume that the OMB holds a copy of all German language travelogues published during the Envisage period. And historical coincidence certainly played a huge role in the constitution of the holdings itself and our corpus as a result. And the corpus creation itself took place in a threefold process. The first step, two steps rooted in the classic methodology of the humanities, with keyword search of different spellings of travel, etc., in the library catalog, as well as the harvesting of bibliographies on the topic. The third step 
represents a novel approach for this domain, machine learning. In this case, embodied by algorithms we called classifiers that were trained for the identification of travel logs based on their OCR full texts that were, of course, not imperfect. And by applying these algorithms, 345 travelogs surfaced that the project team had not identified by this point with the classic methodologies of the humanities. Interesting might be for some of you that we evaluated the algorithms, and although we assembled a huge amount of travelogs before the training of the algorithms, we found out that only like 15 to 20 publications were needed of so-called ground truth to train the algorithms to um, classify the texts at a rate of over 90%, which is why this methodology might be useful for very many other contexts as well. By the end of the project, the corpus consisted of 3,528 travelogs, probably the most comprehensive collection of digital travelogs available so far. The whole corpus is accessible via an open license on GitHub, and why the online public access catalog, the OPAC of the ONB, including the digital copies and OCR of the full texts. The corpus itself is divided into four sets, one for each century. And you can find and exit each set by searching for the markers that you can see here on the right in the column Travelog D16, D17, etc., for each century, and D and star for the whole corpus. On the presentation, you can see what comes up if you search for Travelog D-Star. It's the whole corpus, and it's a bit more than the numbers I just showed you, and this is because there are also metra entries on multi-volume um, books, as you can see on the first one. And you can also combine these markers with additional search terms. For example, the project team also set the historical marker Orient, for travel logs regarding the region of the former Ottoman and Persian empires, the region which the travel logs pro project was most interested in, as well as historical, mar uh, as geographical markers for the continents, as you can see on the PowerPoint. And you can only search for the German terms. This is important. And yes, um, this is on the project in general. And now I'll jump into the analysis itself for today. And by taking a closer look at the total numbers of travel accounts and diachronic perspective, and this is um, the first time that we can give relatively reliable numbers regarding um, printing on, of travel, German language travel logs, um, and probably also in other languages, um, the reports present themselves as strongly embedded within the socio-cultural and political framework as their production and geographical foci responded to ongoing crises, wars, and various other cultural, economic, political, and social developments. The figure on the presentation, oh, too early, um, the figure on the presentation shows the total numbers of travel logs in black, this means the, our whole corpus, as well as the numbers of reports that include descriptions of the Orient in gray. In the following, I will focus on the 16th and 17th centuries due to the restricted time frame of this presentation. As you can see, in the early 16th century, the numbers were relatively low, with a few travelogues published per annum, but started to grow in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. From 1619 onwards, however, the numbers decreased decisively. This decline most likely resulted out of the 30 years war of the tight human financial and printing resources in the Holy Roman Empire and beyond. From 1650 onwards, the numbers increased again, notably with respect to recounts describing the Orient and mostly the Ottoman Empire. The dominance of the latter probably reflected its expansionist policies and continuous clashes with the Holy Roman Empire other, and other powers, especially Venice, Poland, and Russia, which generated the need to gain information about the opposite side. A stark decrease of travelogues in the corpus about the Ottoman Empire after the end of the military campaign marked by the Treaty of Karlovitz in 1699, as well as further increases during the war of 1714 to 18 and 1736 to 39, confirmed this assumption. By focusing on travelogues on the Orient, shifts become clearer if one summarizes their share in the corpus and compares it to the share of all geographical regions across the centuries. As you can see on the presentation right now, with different columns for each century, um, the black is always 16th century and it gets lighter from each century. On the left is the Orient and then the other continents. In absolute numbers, the importance of travelogues on the Orient increased, just like travelogues on all world regions. 
This increase in numbers, however, is not to be equated with increasing popularity. On the contrary, if one takes a closer look at the percentage of travel logs regarding the Orient in the corpus, now on the presentation, numbers are mostly decreasing. Regarding our analysis, one needs to keep in mind that the region labeled here as Orient was a diverse entity, and that the Ottoman Empire and Persia went through very different developments. Both empires were perceived very differently in the German-speaking world. While the Ottoman Empire was for a long time predominantly perceived as an enemy, the perception of Persia was more positive earlier on. During the period 1500 to 1876, there were constantly far more travel logs published on the Ottoman Empire than on Persia. One of the reasons for the dominance of the Ottoman Empire was, of course, the number of travel logs and pilgrimages to biblical sites, the Holy Land, then a part of the Ottoman Empire, which remained predominant among the accounts of the Orient throughout the period under study here, but decreased in popularity as measured in percentage figures. This decline probably was partly rooted in the growing secularization of European societies, but was also bound to the circulation of knowledge itself. The Orient, and most of all the Holy Land, had been known to European for millennia, and were very popular topics of travelogues during the 16th century and before. Consequently, there was already a comparatively significant amount of trustworthy information circulating about the region, which is why there was a greater demand for descriptions of less well-explored areas. Another factor related to the percentile decline in popularity of travelogues about the Orient is probably less obvious and originates in publishing and marketing strategies as a closer look at the places of travelogues production reveals. During the 16th and 17th century, German language travelogues were printed and published in many places across Europe. Most of these places were naturally situated in or near the German-speaking world, and well-known printing centers such as Nuremberg, Augsburg, or Leipzig played a significant role, but no place was as important as Frankfurt am Main. As you can see in the presentation now, the dominance of Frankfurt is obvious. And here you see on the top Frankfurt with all um, publications or all travelogues on the 16th century in blue and those on the Orient in red. And uh, Frankfurt was definitely the place where most of the travelogues with descriptions of the Orient appeared. And also in the 17th century. Here, slightly more travelogues on the Orient appeared in Nuremberg, but Frankfurt and Mainz still occupied the second place. But in total numbers, of course, it's still Frankfurt. At first glance, this result may not seem that surprising, as both Frankfurt am Main and Nuremberg were two of the most important printing centers of their time. On closer inspection, however, it becomes clear that Frankfurt's outstanding position was connected to the fact that it was the place where the majority of the volumes of the most important German language travel collections of the time appeared, those of the Debris and the Hulsius families. Travel collections were established as a subgenre of travel literature in Western Europe from the early 16th century onwards. Such collections were often meant to showcase a specific region or country and usually assembled multiple travelogues on or from a specific geographical region or a certain time period within single volumes or a series of books. Most accounts that appeared in travel collection had previously been published elsewhere, often in other languages. The choice of travel reports for travel collection was of course subjective and the new editions and translations affected their content, intentionally and unintentionally. The aforementioned Debris collection of Voyager was established by Theodore Debris, a trained goldsmith and copper engraver from Liège in 1519. His sons Theodore and Johann Israel Debris continued editing the collection, or rather collections, since they compromised, are comprised of several distinct series until 1634. The volumes in the Debris collections were usually dedicated to the reissue or sing of single travelogues and appeared in Frankfurt for some of the volumes were also or only published in Oppenheim. The collections brought numerous accounts together on the Americas, Africa, Asia, and Oceania, and they were written by a variety of European authors. The travel collection of the Hulsius family started to appear a little later and was established by Livinus Hulsius, a Calvinist religious refugee, author and teacher from Ghent, who came to Frankfurt in 1602. The collection that Hulsius' widow, Maria Hulsius, and his other heirs continued amounted to 26 volumes between 1598 and 1630, most of them published in Frankfurt as well, but several in Nuremberg, Oppenheim, and Hanau. 
The volumes of the Hulsius collection usually represent reprints of travelogues from the debris collection, with the difference that the texts appeared in German only and were at times greatly abbreviated and had less images in them as well. And the books of the Hulsius collection were published in a smaller, cheaper, and therefore more accessible format than the ones offered by the debris. As mentioned above, these collections were one factor that explained the outstanding position of Frankfurt am Main. A closer look at the printers and publishers confirms that the Dupree and Hulsius families published by far the greatest numbers of travelogues in Frankfurt itself, as you can see in the presentation right now. On the left is the 16th century and on the right the 17th century. Yet in both travel collections, the Orient is notably absent. None of the travelogues uh, of the Debris or Holzitz collections from the 16th century describes it, and only one from the 17th century. Samuel Braun's Schifffahrten. The letter does not treat the Orient exclusively, but mostly other regions in Africa, Asia, and Europe. This broad geographical focus might explain why this travelogue appeared in the Debris and Hulsius collections after all. The main reason why the Debris and Hulsius collection hardly included any travelogues on the Orient is most likely the publication of another collection that first appeared in Frankfurt as well. It is called Reisbuch des Heiligen Lands, travel, travel book on the Holy Land, and represents a travel collection that assembles multiple travelogues and mostly pilgrimages to the Holy Land within a single volume. The first edition of the Reisbuch brings 16 accounts together and was edited by Sigmund Feierndam, who we already heard more about from Saskia yesterday. He came from a printer family, was born in Heidelberg, and very well established when the first volume of the collection appeared in 1584, six years before the vo first volume of the Debris collections. During the 17th century, the Reisbuch was reprinted at least three times. The first two reissues also appeared in Frankfurt, and uh, Franz Nicolas Roth enlarged the collection to a two-volume edition of 18 accounts in 1609, which was reprinted in 1629, and the third reissue, now extended to 21 accounts, appeared in Nuremberg in 1659. Reisbuch was meant to be a success, as suggested by its title alone. It was most likely based on the successful Itinerarium Sacre Scriptura, das ist ein Reisbuch über die ganze Heilige Schrift, an itinerary on the Holy Scriptures, by Heinrich Bünting, uh, lavishly, and it's a lavishly illustrated book that describes the biblical geography of the Holy Land, was first published in Helmstedt in 1581 and reissued at least 60 times in many places, except in Frankfurt am Main, between 1582 and 1757. In Frankfurt am Main, however, it seems that the editors of the Debris and Hulsius collections, as well as those of the Reisbuch, probably acted upon well-planned publishing and marketing strategies and coordinated their content to avoid mutual competition. This seems even more likely since the Debris and the Feierabends had cooperated before. A cousin of Sigmund Feierabend, Johann Feierabend, even printed one of the first volumes of the Debris collections. Another reason for such an agreement of cooperation might have been that given Sigmund Feierabend's reputation, it was deemed prudent not to make him an enemy. Feierabend, as we already heard yesterday, was considered one of the most important printers of his time, but also known for his shrewd and at times ruthless um, strategies, because he was involved in numerous legal proceedings and he also published unauthorized reprints and or disregarded imperial and municipal privileges. Just like the cooperation between the Debris and the Hulsius families, the strategy of cooperation rather than competition between travel collections ultimately proved to be a success, at least regarding the flourishing travel collections of the Debris and Hulsius families. The publishing house of Feierabend, however, did not survive very long after the death of Sigmund Feierabend and the publication of the Reisbuch, which, according to the number of volumes and reissues, was the least successful of the described travel collections. At the same time, this strategy probably also restricted the circulation of knowledge about the Orient during the 16th and 17th centuries, precisely because the Reisbuch was not reissued that often and therefore most likely circulated a lot less than the volumes of the Brie and Holzius collections. And this leads me to my conclusions. In terms of temporality, travelogues turned out to be children of their time. The production of travelogues acted in accordance with and responded to general social, economic, and political tendencies, conflicts, and wars. With respect to the Orient, the production of travelogues rose, especially at times when the Orient, and most of all the Ottoman Empire, was perceived as a threat to the West, which led to greater interest in information about the region. 
In terms of the places of production and especially printing locations, the present analysis shed new light on the importance of certain places, most of Thor Frankfurt, as well as on resident publishing houses and printer families and the outcomes of their publishing agendas. At times, even the geographical foci of travelogues and their circulation were the result of deliberate decisions based on marketing strategies. But further research is still needed to understand these processes and trends. Furthermore, the relationship to travelogues in languages other than German and from other regions in and beyond the West needs to be clarified, including but exclusively with regard to translations and adaptions. And now there's a little advertisement on the publications that appeared throughout our project. Thank you. <laughs>